Greetings in the Lord Jesus. This is not Thursday night, and sometimes I can hardly keep up with what night it is and what day it is with some of the hours that I keep. But this is a special broadcast, and I thought it'd be last week. I, I was in my private time, and I just felt there was a shift in kind of the atmosphere, and I know that when that happens, it's it's the mood uh, that the Lord is in. Um, you know, as I have said before, he's able to identify with you in the moment, even though he knows all things. And I covered that with Martha and Mary uh, when Lazarus uh, was deceased. He wept over Jerusalem uh, because they had missed the appointed time. He knows all things, and he knows ahead of time it's going to happen, but he's with us in the moment of what we're going through. It says in the Old Testament, in their affliction, he was afflicted. So that was the way it felt this past week, and I wanted to make sure that the Democrats had their thing in Chicago so it didn't look political his family time and so welcome in uh, the wisdom warriors our sage warriors and intercessors just from around the country and, and other nations as well this is one of those family times where <laughs> i was thinking about my house growing up it was i think like grand central station uh, we were poor but my mother had always cooked in red beans and rice or gumbo or something. Uh, all the boys that hunted and, and would fish and do other things would always bring stuff to the house. They knew that mom would fix it. And so there were my two older brothers. Hey, there were people that would come in. I didn't know who they were. I said, who are you? He goes, I'm Sonny's friend or I'm Pat's friend or whatever it was. And that's just the way it was in those days. Not so much now, but there were times also when it was just the family, no neighbors, no, you know, any of that. It was just family time. And that's what today is for those that are part of the family. There was a time when the pastors would actually, when they taught the Bible and they would also talk about the things that were happening in the community and things around them. And they were a trusted source back in the day. And so they would not only teach from the word of God, but they would also, you know, speak about what was happening, what was taking place uh, at the time. Now I was going to go through a long list of uh, the things that Jesus had done with the Pharisees and Sadducees. If you look at it, there's quite a few times he, he confronted them. He called them out, uh, called them vipers, white sepulchers, and so many other things. He was direct. Uh, he had compassion, but he was very candid to him. Sin was sin and pride and arrogance and all those things. I try to do the same thing with the power of the Holy Spirit to be humble. I desire us to be meek, but for my family to tell you always transparently, candidly in love, what I see in scripture and as a prophet to this nation i haven't prophesied as much and though the spirit of the prophet is within me i can but i will see today and i'll touch on that a little bit it's different if you love the way the country is going uh probably you need to go and not watch this broadcast maybe someone else but I'm going to talk about some things today and just what the Lord had given me last week. And I'll give you my feelings, my personal feelings on that. But thank you for your time. I never take it for granted. So no notes. Let's see how we, how we do. Wisdom, justice, and humility. And that is where we're at for the last, together as a family for the last three years. But it's since I... For years, I desired the wisdom of the Lord. 
and, and we know that it comes from him, justice is just, we see that how it's been changed and perverted today. And we seek true justice and there will one day be an accounting and true justice until that time, you and I have to be the light uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit. Same thing with Luke at his age and his generation and my lovely bride. And then as we mature and understand the Lord better in the scriptures, is to walk with humility. Uh, there are so many that really do not have a background in scripture. Uh, even more, though, more probably don't want a background in scripture. But we'll... I'll address that today. So for those <laughs> who drove to Thibodeau, 8086 South Yale Avenue, Post Office Box 255, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74136. And for your prayer request, it's been the last few weeks, uh, many nights in prayer, and not only for this nation, but for you that are part of our family that write in. And it's been a lot this for a long time for Israel. I think the fasting and the prayer taken its toll along with other things. But I, along with Kimberly, you know, press on and, and continue. So let's just, as a family, I said, sit down and you want to bring me a piece of pineapple upside down cake with a cup of coffee? That's okay. <laughs> So let's see, weary, having one's, there it is, having one's interest, forbearance, or indulgence be worn out. American Heritage Dictionary. So weary, having one's interest, forbearance, or indulgence, and just put up a certain amount for a certain period of time. Weary and fatigue, a state or an attitude of indifference, apathy brought on by overexposure as to a repeated series of similar events or appeals. Again, that's this one is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Weary and fatigue. There is that feeling across the nation. If that's not you, that is fantastic. But for a large percent of the nation, uh, there's a weariness setting in and there's a fatigue. And I'll show that as the way I see it through scripture and being a historian and covering history and the Bible. So let's see our world today. Or if you see that from outer space, uh, the blue globe with all the water and how beautiful it is. But with so many things going on around the world and so many things going on in this nation, what is the condition? What is the condition? Weary, fatigued, worn out by the same stuff. Kind of a picture you know, for me, a, a simple cage in a picture is you can speak for an hour and I can look at a picture and pretty well have it. So uh, I'm, somehow I'm going to figure out how to sit right or do right. Or uh, The world is in chaos. The world is in chaos. What is chaos, a condition or place of great disorder or confusion? Condition or place of great disorder or confusion, chaos. Now, when the Lord created the earth, it was without form and void, and there was chaos, no order. And he spoke the word and brought light into darkness and order into disorder, uh, chaos, that entropy, the laws of entropy, but he brought in order. Second Chronicles 15, 5. In those days, no one could travel safely. 
for total chaos had overtaken all the people of the surrounding lands. Does it feel like that sometimes to you? And I said, well, we don't want to talk about those things. Talk about good things and tell us all the, you know, just tomorrow everything's going to change and uh, I'm going to get back all that the devil stole to me. And, you know, he can do that anytime he chooses and he will. Uh, but not as carte blanche over the whole structured church. If you understand the structural church and what he said in Revelation, the Nicolaitans, he said two different times, this is Jesus, the revelation he received from his father, right? Revelation. He goes, I hate the Nicolaitans. Well, the Nicolaitans started with Constantine when he brought in bishops and broke up the home church, broke up the family gatherings and put for them at that time a bishop. And so you had bishops and others it became a separation of the clergy over what had been a participation in fellowship in home, home churches and home groups is the congregants became subservient or lower than the clergy it was elevated. And that's, that's that word is Lord over, suppress and Lord over. So he said, I hate the Nicolaitans. When we feel that there's those times, we're just not sure. And we call on the Lord. We need shepherds that care, shepherds that are sensitive to the time and the season. But we, as a family, coming together, not relying on, not relying on me, not relying on others, but within ourselves as a family come together as a family church. They said, in those days, chaos was all the land. People were afraid to travel. I, I think about all the things that are going on today, and uh, Luke likes to watch this NASCAR, and I was telling him that, I said, imagine if you had to pull in and get your NASCAR, you know, recharged, everything going electric. Uh, billions spent and had eight stations, but there's things all over. Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11. What has been will be again. I've said this over and over that a student of history, but this is what the Lord says. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Okay. And he goes on to say, is there anything new that you can look at and say, this is new. We've seen this before and for a lot, it feels you know, the Vietnam War, the 60s, and the riots and protests, and I think in those days, it was Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin of the Doors, and it reflected the feelings of the time, and many people at that time thought, you know, the rapture was about to happen because this looks like, the, you know, the tribulation times. Well, it wasn't. It was just the cycle of a nation and the things it faces. So what and where and why are we here today? You and I are light and darkness. And as Reagan had said one time, the nation was to be a city on a hill. He was quoting uh, to be a light to the world, a democracy of freedom, of values, of character and integrity and the morality of the nation. But what's happened? Systematically planned. And I've talked about a nation trying to reach 250 years. Ephesians 2 2, following the prince of the power of the air. And I know that there are many, and we'll continue teaching on it, that believe that Satan is refined or, or confined to. He's not in Gehenna yet. <coughs> Sheol. <coughs> These are not to talk about, really. 
Sheol in the Old Testament, Hades in the New Testament. There are there are nine regions down in hell with different princes over that. You remember Revelation says death and hell follows it, and then in the end, death and hell both will be cast into Gehenna, the lake of fire. But there is a prince of the power of the air, and I know that we've talked about the media being, it's not journalists anymore, it's propagandists. And I'll say it again and again, if you're watching one of the three or four main channels and have been, you're setting yourself up for deception because there is a deception coming. But it's human nature to hear something over and over and over and over. Subconsciously, it's there. And you begin to believe it. Well, that's what they're doing. All of them, a lot of them have the same talking points and the same attacks and the same caricature, uh, whether it's uh, you and I as Americans that love this country or any of the things they detest, they attack. Why do they attack? They are the visible representation of the invisible forces that drive everything. You say, well, Jim, that doesn't make sense. Don't listen, whether it makes sense or not, look in the scriptures because the father said, you know, I have to, you know, your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. And so when we look at that and how it's established in the universe, there is a prince of the power of the air, right? Second Corinthians 4, 4. In their case, the God, small g, Elohim, right? Small Elohim of this world, this secular realm, the inhabited earth. The God of this world, small g, but he still has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. So when Jesus was challenged in the wilderness after fasting for 40 days, uh, the evil one said, you know, all the kingdoms of the world have been given to me. And if you bow down, I'll give them to you. You don't have to go to the cross and, and go through all those things. I will give them to you if you will um, just worship me. Jesus did not call him out on that. It wasn't a lie. He understood that from the fall of the first man, Adam, that this whole world that we're in, uh, the kingdom of this world belonged to uh, the evil one. So you have the prince of the power of the air and the God of this world. And so you see chaos all around the world. You see chaos in this nation. Let me touch on a few things. Hamas. I've, <laughs> we pray a lot for Israel, not only because uh, I care about the nation and they're our strongest ally, but I learned a long time ago, whatever my father likes, Whatever my father loves, I like and I love. What he hates, I hate. And he happens to be a Jew, the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves his nation. So Hamas is a terrorist organization. When your constitution is established, did not say we are established to help the Palestinian people. It is their constitution, mainly. Their declaration is, we're here to destroy Israel and the United States. Well, where do you think that comes from? That's a satanic origin. But for the Palestinian people, and I do have compassion on them, and yet the Palestinian people, they're not wanted by other Arab nations. Uh, with the invasion in Kuwait, with Saddam Hussein, there were many in Kuwait that supported Saddam Hussein. So when all of that was over, Kuwait removed, they kicked out about 300,000 Palestinians. Same thing they did in uh, Jordan, the PLO or Yasser Arafat. 
And after a long civil war between uh, the Jordanian army and PLO and Yasser Arafat, they defeated them and the PLO had to go to Lebanon. And so what did they do in Lebanon? You see what they, it is today with Hezbollah and Hamas. So these groups travel everywhere. But when you as a people elect Hamas or others to represent you, other Arab nations, they don't want you. That's why as soon as the war broke out, Egypt said, we're not taking refugees. So you have Egypt and Jordan and other Saudi Arabia with vast land. They could easily take them in. But everywhere they go, they cause civil strife and division within those countries. So I feel compassion for the Palestinian people. But some of those also, I know that they are policed and enforced, kind of like this monster in North Korea. But some of that, you have to stand up and say, you know, no more. You know, you're destroying us. So we see that and we feel that. If, you know, the nightly news is talking about, and they inflate the numbers and they do not uh, distinguish between a terrorist fighter and a Palestinian. So they report all of these past Palestinians that were killed and many of them are soldiers for Hamas. The media won't tell you that, Islamic Jihad but the media won't tell that to you. So we see that. It's not only seeing, but you can feel things in the air. You can feel, you know, if you go into an environment, it's, I can remember four or five different times. I don't know why, but I came upon wrecks when they had happened and I'd help or do things, but you could, there was just stuff that's in the air afterwards. And it's just, it's just a whole, the whole atmosphere changes. That's the way the atmosphere feels a lot of times uh, in different cities and, and around America. We remember the riots and all those things. Think of Jesus when he was on the cross. He said, the bulls of Bashan have surrounded me. And I've told you, there were no bulls surrounding him. He was looking into the spiritual realm. Bulls, Baal, you remember they made a, a fatted calf. They made a calf and Moses came down, that golden calf, and had to destroy it. So the bull, right? The bull. So we fell in the air and Jesus felt the bulls of Bashan around him, demonic, right? Same thing it can be. You know, obviously you say, I don't see any bulls. Ukraine, Russia, this is famous for this administration. And I don't care what administration is. I don't care if the person is black, white, pink, purple. I don't really care. I don't care if it's a male or a female. What I care about is integrity and character. And so when they try to label you with all these things, I'm like, say, fine, if that's what you want to label it, but you're not going to cower me or you're not going to get me to, you know, sit down in my place or whatever, you know, they... So they come up with these names, uh, you know, cage. I can't even pronounce all the phobias and things they come up with now. But, you know, for this, probably one of the most corrupt individuals to ever get into uh, the White House. 47 years as a senator and accomplished nothing but intimidate, uh, harm people, backstab people, enrich himself as VP. So I don't hear that. That's a fact. Someone has to tell you the truth. And if it offends you and hurts you, then maybe you need to check into it. Because if you put someone high enough or a party, uh, you have an item. And that's not a problem that I have. That's a problem that you and the Lord are going to have to work out on. If you have this skin color or if you have a party you know, or a denominational church denomination, you need to examine your own self. But when I talk about people, I don't care what their ethnic culture is. If they're doing right, I will support and pray and do everything possible. And, and the Bible says, pray for our leadership. There are some things I, at this point, I'm struggling with that. To pray for this individual when I have seen so many things in the spirit and know things, not only with him, but his former boss. Is Trump uh, uh, the new savior? It, it, no, he's got a lot of flaws. 
he he just but one thing he did do he said what he was going to do and he came in and tried to accomplish it the same thing with Barack Hussein Obama he said hope and change and people didn't believe it and he ended up saying he's saying what he's going to do he's going to change the culture he's going to change Saul Alinsky type of stuff okay so at this time, they said there is low to medium risk of Russian invasion of Ukraine in the next few weeks, right? This is General Todd Wolfers after Kiev warned Putin. You know, Putin is threatening us with destruction. April 15, 2020, that's this administration. So what did they do? Uh, this person in the White House called back warships. Why well, the world is on edge right now. This is one of the uh, feckle, feckless, fleckless, uh, weak person there, you know, doctor by the White House. I said, if that hurts your feelings, I'm telling you the truth. I don't care who it is in there. Christ, when he talked to the Pharisees, the Pharisees were the politicians of his day. They ran the temple. And if you weren't part of the synagogue anywhere in Israel, you were an outsider and you had a hard time of providing for your family, or providing food. So they were the religious leaders of the time and Jesus went right at them directly. Here's another one. Biden is also using diplomatic, military and intelligence channels. That means that's code word for doing nothing. To respond reports that Russia offered militants bounties for killing American soldiers in Afghanistan. April 15, 2021, we saw what happened with Afghanistan, right? Ukraine and Russia. <laughs> it's, they're not going to in, invade in the next few weeks, but they did invade, right? So Putin's two-week war has turned into almost, what, three years now? 2022 is when he went in. So why bring that up? Oh, it's you know, to show you where we are at as a nation. Someone has to tell you the truth. And if you don't, turn, don't watch. Go to another channel. But someone has to speak the truth. Billions from the U.S. has flowed to Ukraine. Okay, this was in uh, September 7, 2023. Billions flow. On the right, how much is the U.S. supporting Ukraine? Roughly $76 billion in support. Ukraine has military humanitarian aid, right? So let me show this to you. The 76 billion is an enormous figure. When our infrastructure is falling apart, when they could have built the southern border 10 times over and kept us safe from terrorists coming into the country, the drugs out of the country, sex trafficking out of the country, all of it could have been accomplished. Council of Foreign Relations, this one, is much less than the $2.2 trillion spent on coronavirus aid and the hundreds of billions authorized for the Troubled Asset Relief Program to shore up the U.S. banking system, 2008. So they had to shore up the banking system. I'll show this to you so you'll see. He is one of the largest recipient. But I'll talk about our finances in just a second. Israel? Okay. Egypt? Afghanistan? South Vietnam? Ukraine? That's not reflected with the new numbers, but Iraq? So you know that Iraq has terrorists they harbor there. Uh, we knew that when uh, we left with all the oil fields and everything else that uh, these will never be our friends, but the politicians, they don't understand that. They think you can appease them or give them, as Jared Kushner said, give them good jobs. They got millions and millions and billions that they had been given over the years. And what are they spent it on? Rockets and building underground cities. South Korea, United Kingdom, India, Turkey. And so we, you know, Turkey buzzer do, you know, 95, 98% Muslim who said that they're about to, you know, 
turn their wrath against Israel if they don't stop in the Gaza. So we are giving money to everyone around the world. When I say we, it's you and I. It's not the politicians. Okay? It's just the state of affairs. So Biden has increased the national debt by nearly $5 trillion. Today, the U.S. national debt is over $35 trillion, representing 104303 for every American citizen. The debt grows by $4.5 million every minute. The interest alone costs $2.4 billion a day. Who? The Federal Reserve. Is the Federal Reserve a federal agency? No, it's an independent agency along with the central banks. What do they do? They print fiat money. I'll get into that. The national debt is surging and expected to grow even larger. As Congress continues to spend nearly $2 trillion more than it collects. So you're spending more than you take in. And touch on that. 1973... 40 years ago, when I was in the Marine Corps, the debt was $458 billion, and it's today's $35 trillion. When you compare the national debt to the gross domestic product, GDP, the ratio is close to 123%. These are the facts. Again. According to a 211 research paper from the Bank of International Settlements, owned by... 63 central banks, including the Federal Reserve. Hmm. When a government's debt to GDP ratio exceeds 85%, then GDP is negatively affected. The U.S. is well above that. Thus, future economic growth may be muted as the ratio continues to rise. No kidding. You know, what about you? If you spend more than you take in, I'll show that to you in a second. So who's going to, that burden, that tax burden, 104,303 for every American citizen. Well, you know, about 80% won't pay any. So guess who shoulders the rest? The dwindling middle class. I like this guy. He's in Oklahoma. I don't know who he is, but I like these simple ways that people can express things. So this is that tr two trillion, right? It says, we continue to spend nearly $2 trillion more than we collect, okay? And I saw this, it's true, $2 trillion. Well, I like it when you, occasion does, when you just put it in perspective. So this Republican, John Breeshing, held a town hall meeting, Bartlesville Community Center, last week, where he delivered in-depth presentation on the nation's fiscal state and urgency, all those things, right? His presentation highlighted the exponential growth of national debt, which had surged from $1 trillion in 1980 to over $35 trillion today. And our annual is $2 trillion. He says $76,000 per second is what we're spending. That is debt-related, $76,000 per second, the congressman said. When you add all spending, that's $190,000 per second. Y'all, I know that term well. No, that's faster than the speed of light if you replace miles for dollars. Well, I can understand that. Can you understand uh, the, the light speed, speed of light? No. And as fast as they're spending money, it's the same in the AI yeah, equated it. Here it is with another y'all. We spend $840 billion on defense. And look how much our interest payments were. $890 billion. Last year, we flushed more down the toilet on interest payments over bad decision-making than we did on defense of this country. Astounding, isn't it? Imagine our forefathers. See all the numbers. He also discussed the challenges facing Social Security and Medicare. My seniors. Highlighting the program's financial strains and the looming insolvency projected within the next decade. You better be careful who you vote for. He explained that while payroll taxes covered Social Security expenses, Medicare faced a $600 billion shortfall last year. 
further exacerbating the nation's financial woes. Okay. So if your spending looked like this, always in the negative, go back up top. Nixon removes the gold standard. So at one time, uh, gold certificates and silver certificates, our currency was backed by something tangible, right? You could go and exchange it. Then they made rules and laws, started changing it. And eventually, Nixon removes from the gold standard. Okay. So since then, the only thing that backs fiat money, means it's just paper, it's worthless, is the good word of the government that there'll be good to pay this all, $35 trillion, right? So Congress goes to the Federal Reserve and say, would you start printing out more money, cranking it out so that we can spend it and send it around the world to support other people, understanding we don't have the money. It's paper that's printed. There's nothing to support it. So we don't have any money. We're broke. And yet we're sending this paper all over the world because people say, well, that's backed by America, the American dollar. Do you not think there's going to come a time where maybe that we've seen it before with the depression where maybe that thing is going to collapse. You cannot keep a deck of cards, a house of cards up, just blow on the wrong way and it crashes. Right? So we have no gold standard. So the money that is out there, right? It's worthless other than quote unquote, I owe you the word of the government. Imagine going to a dealership, you print out, you know, some type of good looking thing that says $10,000, take four or five of those with you, go to the dealership and give it to them and say, uh, here, I want a new car and I promise you, I'll pay you. <laughs> you ain't get very far. Well, the same thing with America, but this is America. And we're paying, Federal Reserve is not a federally backed, car. it's not owned, it's not a federal uh, agency. So what do we do? What's going on right now with binomics, inflation, the housing market, groceries, insurance? Can't make ends meet. The government plant prints money, right? What do Americans do? They can't print money, so they just put it on the credit card. Credit card balances hit a new all-time high. According to the New York Fed, America's credit card balance rose 2.4% in the second quarter of 2024 to a record high $1.14 trillion. That marks a staggering 48% increase since the first quarter of 2021. Let me see, 2021... Humpty Dumpty went in and, yeah, you can kind of connect the dots, right? So this is the stress we feel, this weariness, the fatigue, just a financial aspect of what the country is going through. And we'll, uh, these politicians, is, uh, like you know, I've, I've said before, when Bill Clinton got on television, oh, I did not have sex with that woman. These people can look you right in the eye and lie to you all day long. And that's what they did, you know, recently in this last group. They got up there and told lie after lie after lie, and they never covered the policies you and I need to correct the ship. Okay. So let's look at another one that had uh, China, Taiwan. If you're going to attack or try to take Taiwan, you might want to do it with this lame duck, and the other one has no clue, you might want to do it, you know, between now and the election. And if you do that, and if you're China, you may want to have had hackers preparing for several years to attack the energy, the energy grid, right? communications, just to hack and bring it down. So people wrote and said, you know, you said that the Lord told you to buy more. Are we going to go through this difficult time? 
You look, I believe in the rapture, pre-trip. It's my belief. But that doesn't mean for a moment that you're not going to go we go through some hard things. Uh, it's, <laughs> Lord said, you know, there will be trials and tribulation. You might as well face it. But I am, and I'm prepared. You know, things that you don't have. You, you, <laughs> we don't spend money on anything. But for this, you know, I asked the other night, you know, after the whole night with the Lord, I said, you know, we don't even have candles in the house in case something like that were to happen. Well, we have a few. But flashlights and batteries and those types of things, I'm not telling you to go out and buy those. I just know that these around the world, it is a time right now of war and more to come. But if China, look at Taiwan, okay? Like I'm just, these things I tell you, I study in depth. I never, for those that continuously watch every show I do from the intel agencies, I do not use anything from the secret clearance or any briefings that I had in the past. I had to stop getting briefings when the Lord said, stop watching news, stop watching everything in 2018. Okay. The dragon surrounds Taiwan. Oh, there's that dragon, right? And we'll talk about the dragon, the serpent, and Satan. But there is the dragon surrounds Taiwan. China's military could isolate Taiwan, cripple its economy, and make the democratic island succumb to the will of Beijing ruling Communist Party without ever firing a shot. So the dragon is on the move. And what are you going to do if you have that plan? How are you going to distract America? Right. They've been planning same thing with Iran and others, uh, these terrorists sell throughout the nation. I've told you and I've told you and told you from the prophetic word and visions, going back to when I first broadcast, the drums of war, the marauders going across the border. And a lady reminded me of the other day, I remember your uh, vision on ant beds and the different types of ants, the soldier ants that were coming out. So China. Philippines accused Chinese vessels of blocking the South China Sea. Supply mission ramming its ship. <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it during this administration. Or China. They, not from an American standpoint, because for me, I wouldn't join the military again under current situation in the military and with this White House. Those that are in the military and went in and served this nation, I honor you, I respect you, and I pray for you and your families. But this weakness, this woke mentality that the upper leadership is cramming down the soldier's throat has weakened us and other nations see it. Look at this one. Okay. Oh, that's this year, 2024, June. Hmm. The nuclear submarine Kazan, right? Nuclear sub. Down in Cuba, not, it's not carrying nuclear weapons. <laughs> It was associated, it was accompanied by the frigate Admiral Gorjeva. A Russian ship could be seen just off of Havana, 90 miles from the tip of Florida. What does this administration do about it? What did the Pentagon do about it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Do you think they went in and they're just going to, you know, their, their sub was in there for repairs? For the family, don't be that naive. Don't be deceived. They knew when to come. It wasn't under Trump. But now under this administration, everything in the world is happening. You say, well, Afghanistan and, you know, Ukraine and Hamas, that's all over there. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Hamas, <laughs> they have people here as, as well as Hezbollah and Iran. 
Russian nuclear sub 90 miles off our shore. What did this administration do about it? Absolutely nothing. So let's move to the world. This is just some of the things that I, this is the Sudan. No war, displaced people, displaced Sudanese. This is a Sudanese man. Another war. We don't hear about these in other parts of the world. The Lord does. The Lord knows where his children are and what's going on around the world. And so when you have that opportunity to visit with him and he knows that you'll pray for others, he shows you a lot of things. Okay. Haitian gangs have taken over in Haiti, right? What did I tell you several years ago, the Lord said they're going to ship them over from Haiti. I didn't tell you at the time whether it be gangs or how it would happen, a coup, but the gangs took over. But you know what they're sending? And uh, this administration is obliging and helping them. They're sending many of those that practice voodoo and many of their witch doctors uh, that will find family and friends in different cities of this nation. We years and years and years ago, when I went to Bethany Baptist Church, uh, the genre then and today was mission work, mission work, mission work. And I remember the church had purchased some land in Haiti uh, through different, you know, the government and all to build a church or an orphanage. And the people that were there on the ground representing the church said the very next day, uh, right at the border uh, uh, between the parcel of land, uh, witch doctors and their coven set up and started beating drums and sending curses over. People say, well, that's not real. Yes, it, it's very real. If you look in the spirit world, it is very real and they're very active. So what have we seen? You know, we see this around the world and I had said weariness and fatigue. You may not be aware of all these things, but you have to sense something in the air. You have this feeling. We saw this. Right, the riots in Philadelphia. You know this should never, should never happen. No matter you know, if the judicial system worked properly, then those that should be prosecuted would be prosecuted. But we do not have a just system, and many feel that, so they take to the streets and destroy property of many that are minority business owners, many of the uh, businesses were, were Asians that had come over, built uh, you know, rest, uh, different businesses, destroyed, right? So we saw that in Philadelphia, you think, well, that was a while back. You have this and you feel it within you, all the things that are going on around the country, and it, you put it back in your subconscious, but it is there. Seattle Chop? That was a disgrace. Uh, I've said before that uh, Seattle and Chicago and San Francisco, when I was working in the corporate world and traveled all over the country, uh, the three places that Kimberly and I loved to go was San Francisco and 4th of July in Chicago, the taste of Chicago and their fireworks, and then Seattle. It's just a beautiful area. Now we wouldn't go back to any of the cities. It was a disgrace to the nation that this went on. Not only defund the police. And so what do we see today? Israeli protest all over the, you know, take to the streets. These people have no clue. You know, these are, and it's been shown, uh, many of these, this and on campuses are being funded by Iran and they're also being funded by uh, the Open Society and Soros and those. These people desire to see our nation destroyed. The uh, 
not only the deep state that believes that they will, when this happens, they will have positions of power and authority, but the dark state, those that are tied into Luciferian things. So you have protests that we feel, and you know they're going to highlight that on the, the broadcast news with their propaganda. College campuses for Hamas, by any means necessary. If you would take most students, even with the Ivy League, pull them aside and say, can you tell me why you're protesting? I say, yeah, they're just indiscriminately killing all these people in Palestine. Can you tell me more than that? No, that's what they're doing. But if you ask most of them to drill down and give you some understanding of why these things are taking place, who attacked who, and if they were to have a ceasefire, it would give time for this evil terrorist group to regroup, rearm, and do it again in the future. See, that's what this administration wants, that Philadelphia quarter, they call it, between Egypt and Israel. Uh, this administration is pushing Israel to leave that. Well, that's the border where Egypt said, no, we closed all the tunnels. No, you didn't. You lied. Your bald face lying is over a hundred tunnels have been found in many that you can drive uh, trucks and things through all the way into Egypt. That's where the drugs come from. That's where the weapons come from. Sex trafficking comes from. Okay. All over the world, these things are happening. So that feeling of a fatigue, that feeling of a weariness, uh, you don't even, those that keep up with the news, you're going to get a false narrative. But even if you don't, you people feel an unsettledness and unrest. I pointed this out, the corruption at DOJ, CIA, FBI, <laughs> Secret Service. Here's that dude. There he is. Now he's the acting. No, he's the culprit, one of them. You suspended five people. You should have been suspended. Okay. Upper echelon of these people. This is, I show you the picture of the swamp to go and clean it up. DOJ, it, it's, there's no confidence. Now, the rank and file, men and women, just like in the military, they do their jobs. And yet these upper level bureaucrats, so, well, how do you know? Well, we can see it all around us. 50 or so FBI agents down in Mor Largo. And when they went to Joe's and his Carvette and all, they didn't want to cover that too much. He had stuff in his garage, he had stuff in his different offices that he had everywhere. But it's a different type of judicial system. It's a two-tier system, right? those that have and those that have not, but it's also based on who has in power and the authority. And there is a particular party that likes to bend every rule in their favor. Elderly man with a poor memory. So they found all these documents everywhere. Okay? Everywhere. Special counsel explains why Biden won't face charges over classified documents. Now this no party, no Republican, no Democrat, no independent, just an, an American to say he was guilty, okay? Over classified documents, the Justice Department Special Counsel Robert Hur, investigating Joe Biden's handling of classified materials, said this Monty Dumpty willfully retained classified materials with a private citizen, but chose not to, on and on and on, right? But if they went to trial, this person, Humpty Dumpty, could portray himself as an elderly man with a poor memory, quoting. We really want to take him to court and prosecute him because he could portray himself as being an elderly man with a poor memory. Well, if that was the case, then maybe every person that is my age <laughs> and others would just pretend like, I can't remember that. I Who are you? you know, these people, the American people, can see through these things and yet, I guess they lie so much, they just believe their own lies. Report details Biden's poor memory as part of the concern with prosecuting this person and notes two instances in interviews with a ghostwriter in 2017 and with a special counselor in 2023 
where Biden's memory was significantly limited, right? This is February 8, 2024. It'd be difficult to convince a jury that they should convict him by then a former president well into his 80s. Well, what do you think he is? Of a serious felony that requires a mental state of willfulness. Well, we already know he's in that state now. And yet this is the person that is still in charge of the nuclear codes. I don't want the other Medusa, but this shows that this nation, and I look at this Congress and the House of Representatives, I blame this Congress for putting up with so much of this. So many of them are, are guilty of so many things. It reminds me of J. Edgar Hoover with his files is that no one really wants to bring this up, the new Speaker of the House. So you're letting this continue on, and the fear politically is you remove him, then she moves up the presidency, and then, then she would have a better shot of the president. You don't let this, you can't, he says, an elderly man with a poor memory. You might have to remind him who Russia is one day. I'm not making fun of dementia or uh, the things that happen, but that's not who you have in the White House. Somebody who works about four or five hours a day, maybe, on vacation about eight months of the 12. But does this catch all of the Lord by surprise? All these things are going on. Oh, yeah. You remember this? I updated it recently. So what happened? This is ahead of time, right? This is what the Lord showed. Oops. Have we talked about that? Mm, people said, no, that ain't going to happen. He's going to stay in the race. He's going to fight this thing. And it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to be Joe. Oh, see that date? June 25th, 2021. Well, one of the first times I showed this on the tree and the tree was represented with Trump and the leaves of the American people, all those others on the left, former presidents, one on the right, they didn't even, he didn't even put him in the category of presidents. He just put him to the right as Humpty Dumpty and Medusa. In 2021, I tell you what was going to happen. We couldn't say it until now you see it, right? Updated it recently. But now what was said has been done, right? The Lord, you're not catching him by surprise on any of this. So, <laughs> Cover a few more things. He look at Psalms too. And he looks at the nations that rage and he laughs. So what happened? They call it a coup d'etat. Coup d'etat. The sudden overthrow of a government by usually small group of persons in or previously in positions of authority. Uh oh, Barack Obama. Mm. The sudden overthrow of a government differing from a revolution by being carried out by a small group of people who replace only the leading figures, in this case, a leading figure. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Dick Durbin, same ones, same group. Coup d'etat, this person, right? Where this one has not received one vote. She ran for president before. She was the first one to drop out. So you have now someone representing the party, that party, not my father, my mother, and all my relatives, Democratic Party, that they were a part of. They're very proud to be Democrats. Uh, my dad and all those were union workers. Now, not so much. So he's a uh, coup d'etat. So let me tell you just a couple more things. Democrats spoke in the middle class for the middle class. Party like the upper class. Let me show you what the media won't cover for you, okay? At the Democratic National Convention, speaker after speaker talked about what they would do for the middle class. Oh, yeah, it's always promises. You know, trying to buy votes, hand things out. That's what Joe did with student loans, right? But the parties told a different story, so they always come out and represent the working man's man and they're they love our military and now they're trying to even they're having a gag on it but they're having to say you know about the police 
Events were held at the Four Seasons, the Ritz-Carlton, and the Waldorf Astoria. Now, that's not unusual. The Republican Party probably had the same, right? Considered to be among the rit ritziest spots in Chicago, according to the Wall Street Journal. So I'm quoting the Wall Street Journal, okay? One of the many parties was called Hotties for Harris and featured guests playing abortion access skee ball. Boy, they, wouldn't that be entertaining to go to? That you go to Hotties for Harris and guest these wonderful people speaking for the middle class played games called abortion access skee ball. I have no idea what that is, but I'm quoting Wall Street Journal. And offered condoms with wrappers that read prevents unwanted pregnancy, according to the journal. Boy. Sounds truly American, doesn't it? A Trump building in Chicago was not spared. Democrats projecting messages on the tower that read Project 2025 headquarters. <laughs> they lie. Project 2025 is a bunch of conservatives, but it's not. They'll try to tie that to uh, Trump. That's uh, Saul Alinsky. They do those things. The Rules for Radicals. And Harris Waltz with Joy and Hope. That's their slogan. One before had hope and change, and you were hoping you had some change left in your pocket when he got through. These, a joy and hope. The Ritz hosted a 78th birthday party for Bill Clinton, featuring longtime friends and colleagues like former Virginia Governor Terry McAuliffe, longtime Hillary Clinton aide Huma Abedin. You know, you keep it in the family. So Huma is, this is Anthony Weiner's ex-wife. So Huma now is engaged to Alex Soros, the son that's going to take over the Soros empire. So they keep it kind of in the family, right? But this is what goes on behind the scenes that your four main outlets are not going to cover for you, right? Because they're for the working man. This might touch somebody's idol, right? That's that's a nice home. You have no problem with anybody having nice homes. Uh, hopefully you get it legally. Someone is going to have to give up a piece of their pie so that someone else can have more. See, this is what they always talk about. The piece of the pie they're talking about is you and me, not them, right? Same thing with guns. Take your guns away, but we're surrounded with the bodyguards with the same weapons you want to outlaw. That's what they do. They don't want borders, but around their house, they have borders and security guards. Martha's Vineyard, there's one house, 11.7 million. No problem with it at all. Hawaii, another house, 8.7 million. Washington Mansion, that's the one that has... Walls built around it, 8.1 million. Chicago mansion, 1.7 million. So these people, and that's just indicative of uh, that particular thing is a, somebody's going to have to, you know, give a piece of their pie so those can have it. No, that's not what they do at all. They talk one thing that, and do another. So let me go on. Woke. I'm a, so you understand this, my seniors and, and all of us. Woke is an adjective derived from African-American vernacular English, originally meaning alertness to racial prejudice and discrimination, which is good. Beginning in 2010, 2010s, it came to be used as slang for a broader awareness of social inequality, social justice, such as radical injustice, sexism, and denial of LGBT rights, right? Now I still use LGBTQA+, plus, all these other things they add to it. So it started out, okay, got that, and they always twist it. They're always going to put something in there, right? Book has also been used as a shorthand for some ideas of the American left involving identity politics and social justice, not justice, social justice. And they determine what social justice is based on their criteria and their definition. 
such as white privilege. And I see these people that are white uh, repenting for being white. Like I said, I don't care what color you're going to be polka dotted, but know this God, the father in heaven created you and made you male and female. White privilege, reparations for slavery in the United States. <laughs> when the Lord took me, or I had a five-year vision, and I asked him a few nights ago, I said, Lord, you know, that's a lot. I, I won't remember all those. And even now, sometimes lose my train of thought. There's so many things that to see. I said, Lord, well, I forget all those. And he says, no, I told you I'd show them to you. So he took me just a few nights ago. Uh, and showed me again where he had shown me in uh, Africa uh, that there was warfare in Africa between uh, the uh, witch doctors and the spiritual warfare over in the spirit realm, the invisible realm to the visible. Uh, and he showed me the different things in different countries. Well, he also brought me back to uh, the indigenous nations of this country, uh, whether it be the Shawnee, the Choctaw, the Arapaho, the Apache, uh, my mother part Cherokee, right? But also, when you look at that, the Japanese in World War II were uh, rounded up and put in camps. I don't hear anything about that. And then certainly one of the injustices, a blight on our past was slavery. It was abhorrent. Ideas associated with wokeness include a rejection of American exceptionalism. That's the one that I have a problem with along with others, but the rejection of American exceptionalism. <laughs> See, I don't believe that everybody in race should get a trophy. We had, there were winners and there were some were losers. To me, if you were in the race, you were above all the others, but you weren't the fastest, you weren't near the fastest. So I don't see everyone getting a trophy, right? Same thing with dumbing down the grades in school. Well, if you dumb down the grades so everyone passes, you just put the benchmark lower and lower and lower compared to other nations. And believe that the United States has never been a true democracy. That people of co color suffer systematic and institutional racism. That white Americans experience white privilege. Uh, growing up, I didn't have any white privilege. Uh, I knew that the way I would get to college with the GI Bill, African Americans deserve reparation for slavery in the United States is what they say. I'm showing you the things that are confronting people in the United States and they don't discuss them as policy. They go to each other viciously. Ideas associated with wokeness include a rejection of American exceptionalism, never been democracy. And so U.S. law enforcement agencies are designed and discriminate against people of color, and so should be, here we go, right, law enforcement, defunded, disbanded, or heavily reformed. That women suffer from systematic sexism that individuals should be able to identify with any gender or none. Here's your woke. Although increasingly accepted across the American left, many of these ideas were nevertheless unpopular among the U.S. population as a whole. Right? So by woke, I'll show you. Now we have diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. So woke led to this. Diversity refers to the presence of a variety within the organizational workforce, such as in identity and identity politics, not based on merit, not based on the most qualified, but based on identity and identity politics. It includes gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, disability, age, culture, class, religion, or opinion. Well, that sounds nice. This is Saul Alinsky. Dress it up. But the truth is, it has to do with gender identity, right? More specifically, equality usually also includes a focus on societal disparities and allocating resources, the money, right? Follow the money, quoting, decision-making authority to groups that have historically been disadvantaged 
and taking, quoting, into consideration a person's unique circumstances, adjusting treatment accordingly so that the end result is equal. Everything I said about school and uh, it has nothing to do with DEI. We're dumbing down America. We're not having the brightest filled positions, right? It's just, this is across the nation and this is what's happening. And we feel as a nation, Americans, we feel this. I'm covering this because your pastor won't cover it. Others won't cover it. The media won't cover it. But the Lord knows. So companies from Harley Davis and John Deere are backing down from DEI. Remember I told you? Weariness and fatigue. The nation, and I'll show you, is, is getting fed up with outrageous spending, with interest rates, with food that you can't afford. Restaurants are closing by the thousands around the country. People cannot afford to go out to eat the way they used to. They have maxed out their credit cards. So if they have been living on their credit cards for the last six months to a year, that ride is over and the consequences are come. I saw the other day an article that said 60,000 homes that were, uh, they're negotiating to purchase and you had that time period they stop the purchase because they're uncertain of the future and of the interest rates in the financial system, right? So Harley Davis is pulling back its DEI programs following backlash from a conservative activist. Other companies that withdrew or toned down their DEI initiatives include John Deere, Polaris, and Tractor Supply. So this guy talks about them. they're going to go after and they went after Harley Davidson. They backed down because Harley Davidson got word that they were coming after them next. So they preempted and said, no, we're not doing DEI. And they were going to go after Jack Daniels. Right? Jack Daniels, Brown Foreman, the parent company of the Tennessee distiller, distiller preemptively announced, Starbuck wrote this as a guy, that it was renouncing a series of diversity, equity, inclusion, and left-leaning initiatives. Other tech companies that have backed off are Microsoft, Meta, and Zoom. Okay. This person that represents the organization told Bloomberg that he'd like to see the elimination of DEI practice and to, quoting, bring back a sense of neutrality and sanity to American corporations, right? I saw this, somebody had sent it to me, and then I looked for a picture. It said that America is not liberal. American is not progressive left. Some of the major cities in the country that are mostly ran by Democrats and states, you can see different areas, uh, East Coast, West Coast, uh, some uh, in, a little bit in the middle. But these are some of the larger cities basically east and west coast. But they try to convince us this is the feeling of woke and DEI and so many other things that the whole country is feeling this way. It's not true. They're just the loudest and, and the most violent. And these are the ones that the media likes to cover, it, cover and portray them. But what does this White House and what do uh, the puppets at the media they say it's conservative Americans that choose values and character and strength over weakness. So this week, the Lord said there's a change coming. We are at, at this point, an inflection point, right? A moment when significant change occurs or may occur, a turning point. So this is why I'm doing the special broadcast. And I waited until after the DNC. We are at an inflection point in America. And the same with different countries around the world. You can see what they're doing in Germany, uh, going after these mosques and expelling uh, these radical Muslims, 
right? The UK is about to tear itself apart. Uh, there will be other countries that follow. They just let millions of Muslims in another country that practice Islam, which is, <laughs> you know, these pastors get up and say, it, it's a peaceful religion. They have no clue. Uh, shame on them and they'll be judged for it. But now they're seeing with Sharia law and you, know, you can beat your wife as long as you, you know, don't leave too many bruises. I mean, it's a, an inflection point. If you don't believe that, read it. Joel 3.14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. When the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. See, we feel that as Americans. We feel there's something not right. We feel that the nation is heading in the wrong direction. And they keep cramming this stuff. They try to cram it down our throat. This woke stuff, this transgender stuff, these surgeries for children that are five, seven, eight, ten 10 years old. There's so many things like that occurring. And we know that. And there's a feeling of not only weary with all of it, but a fatigue of stuff they're trying to cram down the American people's throat. Okay. And so we know that there's something wrong. We feel that there's something wrong. And we have been asleep for far too long. I remember when uh, Japan attacked, you know, Pearl Harbor and the, and the Admiral said, I'm afraid we have uh, uh, awakened a sleeping giant. Well, the sleeping giant is two tier for me, the true ecclesia, the church, and then everyday Americans that just want to live peacefully, safely, and prosperity, and to be strong again as a nation, right? So when we see these things, and I picked this out because this never should have happened. Never, never, never. Not Republican, not Democrat, not independent, right? Never. And you put the FBI in charge of, of finding out they're corrupt, they'll never. Secret Service to investigate itself? No, the acting director needs to go, right? So he gets up and they say this was horrible for him to go up and say, fight, fight, fight. And they try to discredit that he wasn't shot. All these, these people are horrendous, right? So they try, why don't I bring this up? <laughs> for my family, I'm sitting with you. Open your eyes, open your ears. I look at it and say, just some common sense, right? And we have the common sense with a foundation built in scripture of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say, okay, they tried to assassinate Trump. Iran wants Trump eliminated by election day. I told you a month or more ago, two months ago, I, said, I know what it is. They had $20 million price on it. It's probably 10 times that now, I don't know, because this administration gave them billions and billions. They were broke, okay? So this came out August 21st, 2024, so Iran wants him assassinated so that he didn't go in office. When your enemy doesn't want to go, someone to go in office, there must be a reason for that. Do you think they fear the laugher or whatever they call this woman? Medusa is what the Lord would say. Medusa was, this is his one word to me years and years ago, Medusa. Today, killing Trump remains Tehran's safest option and his highest priority next to growing the country's nuclear programs. So it's ongoing. Be aware. Okay? It's like, well, they tried and that was it. No. Arizona police seek a suspect, right? Let's plot to kill Trump. Man, in his own way, they, they caught this monster. He's not safe right now. There will be some other deranged, satanic-inspired people that will do foolish things. So let me close it out. I had in my office, I'm trying to remember who it was. It was JFK, Martin Luther King, that was one other. I had their portraits in my office. I'm, I don't know who, but I had, you know, John F. Kennedy and Martin Luther King. 
Wow. I respected them, admired them. Didn't say anything about color of skin. Didn't say anything about what party they were in. Right? January 20, 1961. I remember what happened in 1963 and where I was. Quoting him, John F. Kennedy, the world is very different now. Think of 1961. For a man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. Sadly, that is the case with so many nuclear nations now. And yet the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forefathers, our forebears fought, are still at issue around the globe. Yes, they are and getting worse. Belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. <laughs> John F. Kennedy, right? Camelot and such a foundation of you know, beliefs in the Democratic Party, right? John and Bobby and just... But from the hand of God. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Famous line. But he's saying, opposite of today, where the government wants to do everything. They want to give free health you know, to people that illegally, 10 million plus. They want to give them voting rights. So you break the law, you come over here, and even those few that are genuine, sincere they should have the opportunity, but they should do it legally the way so many have waited years to be able to be U.S. citizens. And if you talk to any of them, they, they will tell you it's one of the happiest days in their life when they uh, were sworn in as U.S. citizens, right? So what can you do for your country? They're saying, you know, what you need to give up a piece of your pie so the government can spread it around. It's called socialism. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history, the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessings. Who's his? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Asking his blessings and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must be truly our own. Hmm. Would you hear that from the squad, members of the squad? Would you hear that from Pelosi or Schumer or Durbin or McConnell, any of them? You may hear sound bites, and all it is is sound bites, right? So, <laughs> here's a Kennedy. Oh, he wasn't, he wasn't welcome into the Democratic Party. So he had to run as an independent because they did him so wrong. And you think of the days of John Kennedy and Camelot and so much. The nation was devastated in 1963 in Dallas. Bobby Jr., right? Uh-oh. Huh. Now they're all up in arms, even his own family. You cannot betray the Democratic Party. He didn't betray the party. The party betrayed him. Same thing with all of my relatives that were in the Democratic Party. They didn't leave the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party left them to embrace all these weird social things and around the world, right? What MAGA really mean? This is him quoting, okay? I'm quoting Bobby. Not what the news media say, not what these talking heads the phrase is troubled liberals who think it is a call for a return to an America before civil rights, gay rights, and women's rights. But I have a more generous interpretation, one that is truer to my experience of Donald Trump as he is today. Make America great again. Recalls a nation brimming with vitality, with can-do spirit, with hope and a belief in itself, 
it was an America that was beginning to confront its darker shadows, could acknowledge the injustice in its past and present, yet at the same time could celebrate its success. It was a nation of broad prosperity, the world's most vibrant middle class, and a idealistic belief, though not consistently applied, and freedom, justice, and democracy. It was a nation that led the world in innovation, productivity, and technology, and it was the healthiest country in the world. I have talked to many Trump supporters. I have talked with his inner circle. I have talked to the man himself. This is the America they want to restore. Bobby Kennedy Jr. So he will now campaign with Donald Trump. We started the prince of the power of the air, the god of this world, with fatigue, right? Weariness. We are at that point where there are so many in the church that are tired of the little sermonettes, that are tired of all the schemes and uh, ways of trying to extract money from the sheep, uh, going to church and getting your 20, 30 minute little sermon. And then by Wednesday, maybe by Tuesday, you have no idea what the preacher talked about. You have controversies of allowing homosexuals in the pulpits. There's so many things going on, but there is that feeling within the church. And this is what the Lord was saying within the church that is saying, I'm hungry. I haven't been fed. I need, and there's one place you can get fed. That is through the true word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So we are at a reflection point, and there are many that are saying enough of this with so many things going on in the world. We're weary. Uh, we're fatigued with all this. I want to go back to the source that made this country and its people great, and that is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the values, the morals, the character that we are taught in Judeo-Christian principles. So there is a movement, especially in Luke's generation, where all this stuff, you, know, you go in and you spend your time networking in church or seeing your friends go to lunch. There are people that are hungry and there is a movement with them to go back to the word of God, to go back to sound teaching, because the time that we're living in is a time they know things aren't going right, not only out there, but church as usual cannot continue. This worship that turned into entertainment, when I left one church, it's because I saw written above it, Ichabod, because it went from worship to entertainment. And there is also an inflection point with America. Americans are getting fed up with what has been shoved down their throat in woke, in DEI, in reverse racism, they're just so many people take to the streets and they're funded by liberal progressives and they come and show up in buses with these uniforms and helmets and they uh, start riots and beat people. And we've seen in the past where they burn down buildings and take over cities. This is in the psychic of the American people. And we're at that reflection point. multitude in the valley in the U.S. is we've had enough. We are tired and they're pushing back in school boards. They're pushing back against uh, the school boards and superintendents. And all of this was shown several years ago. One of the, these are some of the things, the clashes that will come between uh, teachers and parents, parents and school boards and superintendents. There was going to be a crisis within unions where the union a rank and file did not follow what the union leaders that live lavish lifestyles and contribute millions of dollars to the progressive democratic party. The unions would be in an uproar. And we see this across the nation in so many areas where people are getting fed up and people are saying enough is enough. 
These people come into your store and try to rob you. We see so many now that are defending themselves. And you know, who in the world would tolerate? They go into these uh, expensive, Lord Taylor, in these expensive stores and gangs go in 20 or 30 and they take out all the Americans. No, that is not right. You need to prosecute those people. And I cannot help it if you have to incarcerate them. If they broke the law and that's the sentence, that's the law. You cannot let them go free because you think they're not being fed well or they don't get uh, the proper medical treatment. There is abuses in the systems and it's not right, but it's also not right to turn people out that are convicted criminals of heinous crimes so that you don't have to deal with it. So the whole point in the special broadcast is we're at that time. And the Lord and president said, not only in my church, they're going to begin to seek that harbor in Christ and the things, the way it used to be and has been for a long time in church, it will be church as church for many, but there are those that are hungry and seeking the same way in this nation. So I hope I didn't take too much of your time. I know that putting this and then the same with, uh, to visit with you again on Thursday, we'll see how it goes, but thank you for your time. Thank you for your prayers as we continue to pray for you. Thank you for your donations that, that help make this possible, even during these difficult times. So we thank you and we are humbled by your prayers and your, your cards and birds and things that you send to me. Thank you on behalf of Luke and my beautiful bride. Until I see you the next time, God bless you as we keep you in prayer.